Some people never learn. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. Amen. <laughs> That's good. I don't know what the taglines for the um, other three are. Let's see what the tagline is for 3D. Three times the laughs, three times the stupid, and three times the pain. That's fine. Yeah, not great. Some people never learn. It's pretty good. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> After 20 years of doing it. Yeah. Number two is, when is the last time a movie made you beg for mercy? Uh, That's, that one's all right. Let's see what number the first one was. Uh, it's just, it's do, a movie. Do not attempt this at home. <laughs> <laughs> honestly probably the best one <laughs> or with stuff you'd never see on tv that's true there's so much penis <laughs> the following stunts are performed by professionals so neither you nor your dumb buddy should attempt anything from this movie <laughs> dumb buddies is pretty funny how back that <laughs> episode 281 i think of i suffer i'm nathan sure i'm kit <laughs> uh katie got hit by a bull broke the wrist yeah. collarbone got a concussion so she's out this week the bull didn't like magic yeah <laughs> fucking did the did you see the milk come out he's like ah oh, dang it <laughs> <laughs> ah shit <laughs> Uh, so Katie's not here, so we're gonna talk about Jackass for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the best TV slash movie franchise ever. I like. I had a like I don't know a long time that I had not watched any of these, and then when like Forever came out, I went back and watched all of them, and they've just become like everything's the worst. I'm gonna watch Jackass. Just, yeah, like, pretty much real comfort like... watches. <laughs> A nice warm blanket made out of pig gum. <laughs> like a potty is just drinking that like like it's nothing is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> just chugs it. It's like, yep, definitely pig. Ugh. God. That's semen all right. <laughs> and he's like, it's I forget if he said it's better or worse than the horse. <laughs> <laughs> better. Better than the horse. Um yeah, especially like Jackass Forever became like a real, like the one I probably still watch the most now. Like something about it was just like, just feels like wholesome, I guess, which is weird. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to see the gang back together. Yeah, like I don't know if you have watched like any of the point fives, but uh, uh, yeah, I think like once, once yeah. each. The the one for Forever is like very. Like, cute is the only word I can like put for it because there's very much this aspect of like them all getting back together for the first time in like I don't know a decade. Yeah. And when they show some of the footage where they're like, well, we'll do like some test footage. We'll see if this could like will e can even work now. And you kind of see that like spark hit for like all of them again. I was like, this rocks. I fucking just I don't know. It made me like so happy watching both of them for the first time last year yeah it's 2022 yeah i think it's last year i don't know why i keep thinking i've watched them like, so many times yeah already it feels like it's been longer than that well i keep thinking i was like oh this is a pandemic movie but then, like i not like thinking it came it out got in 2020 like, four times yeah. um well i was reading too that like i guess the studio used this as like their test movie to see how no oh, yeah going back to filming was gonna be and there was so weird one to test that out with. Well, I guess because like a lot, you know, so much of it was already going to be outside. Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I, the a relatively small crew. Yeah. And it's like, you could, you could do all of these dudes pretty easily. Like where they were doing like the, the thing where like you couldn't leave set or like whatever you had to be in like the bubble that like, 
basketball uh, I players. Forgot the, I forgot the bubble. <laughs> like sports teams were trying to do and all yeah. failing miserably. The NBA, at. <laughs> NBA in the dome. Uh, I'm trying to see if I could find the number, but there there was like a trivia thing about how much it cost just in testing. Oh yeah, it was over a million dollars for just testing uh people for covid every like time they were like coming to set that just fucking wild this. <laughs> uh which i guess like depending like how early it was like i don't know i i, I see it where they were just like probably charging fucking insane amounts yeah, of money for out the ass to get tests test that test kits and stuff <laughs> didn't work probably <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, so I guess, like, what's your, your history with the Jackass franchise? Because for me, it was like, they it hit, like, TV at, like, the perfect time for my age, where, like, I think, I feel like MTV, I kind of hit perfectly, where I was, like, the perfect age for Beavis and Butthead premiering, and then Tom Green, and then Jackass, and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I was... I don't know if I was watching, like, right when it came out. Maybe it was whenever the second season had just aired. Uh, and, you know, at the time, I was big into ECW. So it was like, stay up late and watch Jackass on MTV, and then ECW would run, like, a Saturday night. And <laughs> so just, like, any any form of people doing the dumbest thing to hurt themselves. Right. <laughs> At that age, where that was the best, the best entertainment. Ah, oh, God, I mean, I always, I remember like discovering ECW on cable TV because I was like in Ohio, so it was like right next to Pennsylvania. Yeah, and I remember being like, "This feels like wrong to be watching." <laughs> yeah, this this shouldn't be allowed, probably. <laughs> and just like not like it was like a like I'd been watching WWF like growing up, so like I obviously knew like wrestling but like that just felt it just felt like you're like stumbling on something you're like am i on like the black market like what is this right <laughs> it's like it's like videodrome for yeah. <laughs> for teenagers stumbling across it it just like i don't know i just remember being like can you do this yeah just allow <laughs> and then there was like some like it would it would air that and then like a like these two local Dayton shows, or one of them was just like a bunch of punk videos, and one of them was I think it was called Metal Mania, that just played like a bunch of metal videos, and I remember that being the first time I heard like Morbid Angel, and yeah. like from the um, I think God of Emptiness video, which I would make fun of endlessly before I realized it was good. Yeah, because <laughs> I just like the video's fucking weird, and all I can really remember is the bow to hit me faithfully part, and just like the vocals yeah. for it, just being like, "What's this fucking dumb bullshit?" Bow <laughs> and now, like that song fucking rules. <laughs> uh, but I used to like I remember like because like watching that shit like Saturday nights and just being like I don't know thirteen, which probably explains a lot at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I remember, like, I was on the show pretty early, because it was, like, around, like, like, right before, like, the show probably had, like, maybe the first two seasons, and then I think I lost access to, like, MTV and, like, cable TV for, I don't know, ever, because I don't think I've had cable since. And so yeah. I remember, like, uh, watching at least the first two seasons, and then... Catching back up to it, like, whenever they all started hitting, like, DVD. And, like, just like, being like, oh, yeah, I remember this. This is fucking awesome. And and then, I like, I saw the first two movies in theaters, I know. And I can't remember if I saw no, them. Oh, yeah. And, I was so, so stoked to go see them in a theater. I mean, see that first movie in the theater with just, like, a packed theater full of people was an experience. I think I was a little too young for the first one in a theater. So my best friend's brother worked at Blockbuster and he got to bring home movies like a week early for free. So he brought home Jackass and watched it like <laughs> 10 times in a week. Hell yeah. That was like, because uh... like the f first one, it's been like a minute. I feel like the first one I don't rewatch as much. 
like i have like this real thing about like where the at least the first movie and a little bit into the second one where like i don't really care about when they're like pranking just regular people yeah doing the stuff out in public yeah so like once it like this especially like three and then and you know forever it's like 99 percent just them fucking with each other which i find funnier yeah although same. like you know renting a car and getting it into a derby is pretty fucking funny <laughs> <laughs> that one's good uh i was never a big fan of the party boy stuff and then rewatching it like yesterday uh whenever he's in japan and the officer's like chasing him and he's playing with the <laughs> police officer's hat and shit oh, yeah. that was really funny i i like party boy i think it works better when they do it on the tv show because it's always yeah. so quick like it's like yeah. the, it's like the when they have Not a full like ten minute bit. Yeah, it's like when they have like Preston and Wee Man just go like running by chasing each other. Yeah, where I'm like, this works way better when it's just like a, a brief a, thing, eight second thing, as opposed to like a two minute thing. Um, and yeah, like I don't know, rewatching them like lately, I feel like I don't know if it's like real world stuff that like affected it or what. I just became less tolerant of the Bam stuff. Yeah, uh, he is a much more annoying person than I <laughs> realized when I was fucking, like, 14. Like, there's... like, watching his stuff, he just comes across as very whiny. Yeah, like, there's st- like his parents are obviously pretty funny. Yeah. Like, when they the fucking, April and Phil are the best. The alligator or whatever in their house yeah. is very funny. And when they do stuff like that, but then there's, like, the shit when it's just, like, him... With the gun in 3D with like the camera on his yeah. dick and just like walking around and like peeing on people. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't funny to me. Yeah. But then there's like. When they're the, throwing snakes on him, though. Oh, the best part of any of those movies. <laughs> when he gets like legitimately upset, I'm like, this rocks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why like Forever became more of like a, a. Like the more of the comfort watch for me is because like he's not in it and then like the. It's just them fucking with each other outside of, I think... I mean, like, the Irvin Zisman stuff is, like, pretty funny. Although yeah. they don't really do much with it in forever. It's just him getting, like, launched into the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty good. But the one... <laughs> like, just him walking around, like, there's... I think it's in one of the point fives because they couldn't use it, where he goes to, like, some construction site... And it's just walking around, and the construction crew, like, won't pay attention to him until he starts breaking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, like they, like, they talk about this segment for so long, we're just, like... Or it's not even that. He's walking around, and he's fucking with stuff. And they're all just on, like, a lunch break, and they're just like, I don't know, whatever. Fuck this old dude. And he's, like, <laughs> pushing over, like, sheetrock and breaking it and whatever. And they're just kind of like, yeah, whatever. And then he's just, like... I had no choice. And he's like, I just decided to start like peeing in the corner. And that's when they're just like, whoa, 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 dude, what are you doing? <laughs> and they start carrying him out, like, like trying to be all brisk thinking it's this old man. And he's just like screaming at them in that old man voice and just like, f- like putting up a fight and then just goes limp as they're trying to carry him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Yet yeah, I've still have yet to watch the bad grandpa movies yeah that that doesn't seem terribly appealing yeah i, w- I would watch action park though i watch action, action park, park funny. and it's okay like the best part of the movie is pontius is in it as like his as knoxville's like right hand man or whatever and yeah. he's putting on like a legit like a performance while still playing essentially chris pontius and it's like actually really good but like they most of the movie is like a father daughter story with Knoxville and like his daughter, and it's it becomes a little like cloying as opposed to like I want to see stuff about the park. Yeah, but it's not like I don't know. A lot of people on Letterbox fucking hated it, and I didn't find it as like unwatchable as everyone else. But I also I think like I followed it up with like the actual documentary on the place, which is incredible. <laughs> I had to ask Caitlin at some point after I watched it. I was like, have you gone there? Because it was like in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. 
I wish I wish oh, I had gotten God, to go. Same. I would have gotten so hurt. <laughs> I would have fucking rocked to like break my arm there. I, I would have one hundred percent. Like the entire time I was watching it, I was like, when I was ten, I would have done all of this. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Um. So yeah, like the uh, whole franchise overall, perfect, very good, perfect quadrilogy. Yeah. Uh. I guess like because so the only thing I really rewatched for this was Forever, and I like took a note of the stunts we could go through kind of like talk about them like stunt by stunt or whatever um what are some of like i guess before like we do that like from the first three like what are some of your like highlights i guess i think number one just based on pure absurdity is the uh the corvette tooth pull oh my god or... so good <laughs> it it works so perfectly. <laughs> that pop and the the pop sound is so upsetting. <laughs> and Pontius at the end and being like, oh, you know how I told you in. I could put it back in? <laughs> that story wasn't true. <laughs> the look on Aaron's face <laughs> as he's just like in pain and then like I I don't know why he believed it. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> just so utterly traumatized by all of it. Aaron might be my favorite of, like, the entire crew. Especially, like, by the time you get to Forever, he's just, like, the star of that. And Yeah, it, he was one of, the, one of the guys, like, watching the show. Like, I never appreciated his stunts very much. Yeah, but same. But you watch Forever and it's like, oh, no, has Aaron just, like, low-key been the secret MVP this whole time? Like, we'll talk about it when we go through Forever, but, like, the cup test in Forever is, like, easily a top three oh, man. for me. <laughs> Amazing. The hockey player being like, yo, dude, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> P.K. Subban. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, Aaron, no joke, you're <laughs> fucked. So, uh, yeah, like, I that that that's, that's definitely up there for me, the tooth pull one. I feel like a lot of the stuff in 3D works really well yeah. when you like outside of like a lot of that's like the bam solo stuff in it i like uh i like a lot of stuff in two two is like such a formative movie for me so like the beehive limo is super fucking funny <laughs> uh the wee man preston bungee jump where no one realizes that preston's just kind of yank <laughs> wee man into the river like that <laughs> fucking incredible uh, uh, the fucking, I forget which one it's in. I feel like it's, might be three. I feel like two's the one I've seen the least, because it's like, it, for whatever reason, like, leaves streaming a bunch. Yeah, it's the only one that's not streaming on Paramount right yeah, now, which, which is, is very yeah. weird. I don't know what issues there are with two specifically, the... but it needs to be available so everyone can see them think see them make Wee Man think that there's a card throwing machine <laughs> throwing cards at his butt crack. That's so funny. Uh I would never use a card throwing machine on you, Wee Man. The uh the one where Ryan Dunn is doing the like river jump, but it's just that creek and he just like hits the like like <laughs> yeah, the slope like, up of the bank. ramp. <laughs> And, like, it's got Wee Man just dancing as, like, a leprechaun next to it yeah. for some reason. <laughs> They're like, hey, Brian, extra points if you just land on Wee Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, yeah, Brian Dunn, real MVP of those first two. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, uh, like, I, I, you could tell how much of them were just him being like, I don't know, nobody else wants to do this, so I guess I'll be the one to do it. And they're yeah. always so good. <laughs> One that always makes me laugh is uh, whenever they've got the the ramp going into the like above ground pool. Oh yeah! So they put Ryan Dunn in, in the, the fucking wheelbarrow. Uh, wheelbarrow. <laughs> I for, Incredible! I forget who it is, but whoever it is that goes and just slams straight into the side of the pool always makes me laugh. <laughs> then fucking, fucking Dave. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> Dave England, another fucking MVP. <laughs> yeah. Of all the jackass guys, he's the only one that has aged horribly and looks like he could die at any moment. <laughs> he equally looks like he's the most beat up and also, like, the most, like, put together somehow. I don't know how to explain <laughs> like, it, but... 
I think like the tooth that he's got missing just doesn't help. <laughs> and especially because so much of his stunts are him just like shitting somewhere. <laughs> just like Yes. Um Yeah, uh oh fucking uh instant classic is Knoxville boxing Butterbean in the department oh, yeah. store. <laughs> he's just like, is Butterbean okay? <laughs> the the second funniest line ever uttered on Jackass behind Knoxville saying, I can't believe he fell for the soup when they have the big hand <laughs> slapping <giant> everyone. <laughs> and they have Aaron like come in with the soup. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's like that's definitely like a top one for me. <laughs> uh, like that, uh, that one, and then when they have the fucking the note in the hallway of the hotel that just says like the boxing glove or whatever that pops out yeah. of it, <laughs> and they make Wee Man get on the chair <laughs> to read it. <laughs> the text gets so tiny at the bottom of it. <laughs> oh, it's oh, so good. I've forgotten. I think maybe my all-time favorite from the original movie is the golf course air horn. Oh, those dudes get so bad. <laughs> so bad. I always and the forget, best I always the best bit the... is they uh they start lining up the balls cuz they start they're going to start hitting them at them while they're in the bushes and he starts blowing the air horn while they're hitting the balls at them. Oh, for the reason I always think that's like in the TV show. I always forget that's in the movie. <laughs> cuz like I I have not seen the TV show in like probably since it originally aired and then when forever came out and i was like i'm gonna watch all of these i i watched the tv show i think i maybe made it through the first like two seasons i don't know if i ever finished it and the tv show is rough <laughs> when you go yeah. back and watch it now a bunch of episodes have like the same stunts where they just kept like just throwing them into episodes especially <laughs> in like the first season yeah and you could tell so much of it was like shit that they just like took from like old home videos as opposed to actually filming because i think like all of all of two becomes like the newer stunts but like so much of it's just like old skate video footage and shit yeah <laughs> i was like i don't remember this how did i fall in love with this like tv show so quickly because <laughs> this is hard to watch <laughs> um yeah uh, we'll uh get into forever uh so forever starts with a banger opening with uh what is deemed Pontiosaurus <laughs> the title of the uh the segment which is Chris Pontius's dick drawn as a fucking Godzilla monster wreaking havoc on everybody including Tony Hawk in a wig incredible <laughs> for some reason <laughs> coming coming on everything oh it's so funny <laughs> if you've never seen this movie and you want to watch a movie where Tony Hawk gets knocked to the ground by a fire extreme a amount of semen. Cum. This is it. This is uh, the movie. Uh, there's like a scene in the credits where they just show them like just dumping this like fake cub on everybody. Yeah. And it just looks so sticky and it's upsetting. It knocks Tony Hawk's wig off. No, I, know. <laughs> I was like, he gets up and he's like, I was trying to look stoked the whole time. Did it work? <laughs> Yeah, dude. like well, while well, his super sticky comes dripping off of his face, and I guess like did Dave, it work? Dave England got like a legitimate burn from like the explosion that like knocks him and oh yeah that thing because I guess this is like uh, so I guess like after like when they were promoting it, Knoxville was like, yeah, this is like the last one I'm doing at least as like a performer in performer. it because he got fucking wrecked by the bull in it like. No. Uh, Dave England got like a legitimate serious burn. Uh, somebody else, like Steve O, I think, maybe broke their wrist or ankle filming. Like, they got like real fucked up <laughs> making this. That's probably why it took so long. Yeah. Well, like in the the four point five like little documentary thing, they talk about how like they got together to film stuff to see if it would work and as they were just like okay like this this is definitely a thing let's start filming it was like <laughs> like march 5th 2020 and so like they got completely they shut down for yeah, like a year weekend. or something and yeah um so yeah Ponti pontiosaurus pretty good pretty good opening up there with I, like i feel like the 3d opening i need 
someone who's listening that saw this in a theater to make sure I'm not losing my mind. Because when I saw it in a theater during this bit when it cuts to Wee Man and his headphones, he's listening to A Thousand Miles by Michelle Branch. And then this and is that complicated. Is, <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, it's Avril Lavigne and like the at least the streaming. Okay. See, it, the ones that I've watched, that's not in there. Huh. It was not in there on the... I think I bought it. Or maybe it was when I watched it on Paramount whenever it first came out. It was just like silence. And I was like, that's weird. Where did the music go? Weird. Am I losing my mind? I wonder if like they had like an issue when it first came to like streaming or something with like a music right thing. Because I, I can't know. I can't remember. I feel like when I watched it this week, it was maybe the first time I like actually noticed a song playing. Yeah. But like, I couldn't tell you cause I, I feel like I remember there the first time I watched it, there being a song, but I couldn't tell you if it was complicated or not. What the fuck? <laughs> this is, this is my own personal fucking uh, Mandela yeah. effect. <laughs> the, the conspiracy that uh, yeah. MTV is erasing Vanessa Carlton out of your viewing experience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So then Bastards. it goes, it goes into the human ramp, which is a great, <laughs> so, <sick. laughs> so good. <laughs> Fucking. Well, so I guess real quick, what do you think of the new cast? That oh, I like, in this I movie? like all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like, like Rachel doesn't get a lot to do. Yeah. But like Zach is killing it. Poopies is killing it. Um, Dark Shark. Just yeah, a Dark king. Shark's the best. <laughs> Love Jasper. Yeah. Um, I'll be interested to see if they, like, continue somehow. Because I feel yeah. like this could work with, like, the, you know, like, Steve-O and Knoxville going more into, like, a Pontius kind of role. Where, like, Pontius and this is just kind of around through most of it. <laughs> yeah. And just, like, commenting. And so, like, I feel like I would I would continue watching this series with just, like, the new cast and then just, like, the old. Yeah, dudes. just, like, on the sidelines. Yeah, and, like, like, doing some of the, like... Just tasering each other yeah, in, gonna, in the balls. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, doing some, like, some of the more, like, not getting hit by a bull stunts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the human ramp is pretty fun. Uh... Just pretty much fucking Preston laying down with a ramp on him. <laughs> yeah. Or like as soon as soon as he gets <laughs> under the ramp, he's like, "We gotta go, we gotta go, <laughs> get me out of here." I love Preston in this one. <laughs> like, <laughs> so funny. Uh, fucking the first thing you get is poopies farting on Knoxville as they're laying on each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like your introduction to him. <laughs> Um, like he's appropriately named. Yeah, and then you get a real highlight in this movie: the dumb dumb game, <laughs> which is probably in my top three in this one. Every single time they ask Aaron to spell dumbbell, I'm like, <laughs> oh fuck, is it two B's or not? <laughs> the accidental hit at the very beginning, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the fact that Knoxville, I think, hits like somebody right the wrong hits the wrong button like a couple times. Yeah, at the <laughs> at the end, he fucking like hits Aaron even though he won. <laughs> uh, this one's just like literally, it's a uh, uh, <laughs> a trivia game where there's a flip flop attached to like a it's like a mechanism, like a yeah, like a hydraulic arm yeah, that <laughs> just slaps you in the balls super hard <laughs> if you get it like wrong. A, uh, uh, classic poopies, or whatever. <laughs> yes. Who who plays Play piano, piano on the Elton John record and Poopy's just like stands there and is like, oh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Elton John. That's so good. I like they ask him the question, the first question, like, and he gets hit. And he's like, I'm not good at math. And Knoxville's like, I'll keep that in mind going forward. <laughs> Poopy's get so confused on some of his answers that it made me question <laughs> myself, even though I knew. I was like, damn, this man's so well, fucking confused by this. Am they, I wrong? When they asked the Elton John question, I was like, is this a trick question? Did Elton yeah, John right? like, not play piano on it? <laughs> Did he ever <laughs> not play like, piano on a record? Did was, he hurt himself? It's like, what a weird question. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
Ed, that I, oh god, that just seems so fucking terrible getting hit with a flip flop. <laughs> Awful. Um, soccer ball surprise. I don't recognize on the title. <laughs> uh, it's just Stevo's in the uh in the porta potty, and as oh, soon as he walks out, they yeah. launch the soccer ball and hit him in the head. That's, that sounds terrible too. <laughs> I just took a huge shit in there too. <laughs> I like the the porta potty stunts, and I think three when it's just all the blue liquid. No, he just yeah. fucking hits him and blow <laughs> like, up. Yeah, and Dave England goes in there, just like checking his hair, whatever, checking his new haircut, <laughs> just gets fucking blasted. <laughs> uh, and then what I think is probably might be my favorite segment in the entire franchise is the Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. <laughs> incredible <laughs> from start to finish it's just peak cinema they trick two different groups of two people to sit in a room and they're gonna like they're gonna i think they knoxville says he's going to like do some sort of like stunt with this snake and they're just in there to watch and like you watch the new guys and you're just like yeah that makes sense that they would like fall for this why aaron and like dave england and whoever else falls for this is uh, just they should they should know better <laughs> like and what the what they do is they go through this whole thing about how like this is the one of the like the most deadly poisonous snakes blah 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 and then like <laughs> there's no actual snake in the room they turn all the lights off and do like a rattlesnake noise and like yeah, knock over like, the fucking knock tub. the bucket over <laughs> and then it's just all in black light <laughs> or uh, like, before uh, dark before the bucket vision. even falls like the lights go out and immediately everyone just goes ah! oh yeah you hear like uh aaron and like england and who like we man just being like god damn it i knew it <laughs> uh and then <laughs> anytime it cuts to like pontius just dancing like, like buffalo bill in the baggers the first time i watched it i don't think i noticed him in it and then the second time i was like <laughs> this so is good. the funniest goddamn and... thing i've ever seen <laughs> In the fucking corner. <laughs> like, he doesn't say anything. He's just there. No one ever interacts with him because it's, it's like in no the one dark. And there. you're just seeing it like night vision. <laughs> it's so funny. And then, like, whenever someone discovers the, like, back room, it's got, like, frying pans hanging from the ceiling and, like, I don't know, tacks or some shit on, like, <laughs> yeah, one it's of the like things. Yeah, it's like mousetraps and tacks on a table. And Zach's just like, ah, oh, fuck it. It goes, like, jumping over the table into everything. <laughs> just, like, Aaron's, breaks everything. Aaron's reactions to everything's incredible. Oh, he's he's, so he's like, oh, now I've got a weapon. Now I've got a weapon. Because he's got, a, like, a broom. And so just like, walks up and grabs it and tases his arm till he lets what? go. <laughs> and then, and like, then uh, he, uh, he finds the door. And he's like, Dave, there's a door over here. And Dave's like, wow, how convenient, a door. And he's like, come on, come this way. He's like, well, and just turns you, and I'm immediately hits here. that pan. <laughs> that and, like, I think it's, is it Dave England at the very end? He's like, no, fuck it, I live here now. Yeah, I'm not I'll <laughs> start a new life here. <laughs> One of the funniest line deliveries of the entire franchise. <laughs> oh, what a fucking absolute. Uh, perfect, perfect segment. Uh, Dylan just texted me. I'm guessing he's listening to the, the the most current episode and just said, "Just warning you, Kirk Cameron saves Christmas is one of the worst things I've ever watched." <laughs> that does not surprise me. <laughs> I will see if he wants to come on. We'll cover. I'm only going to cover that movie if he if Dylan comes on the podcast and rewatches it. <laughs> uh, so after Science of the Lambs, we get body surfing. Which is like another one that I'm like, this is fine, but not like yeah, a, it's okay. There's a period periodically. There's those yeah. There's ones where they're just like, I don't know. We had like a bunch of like fans, so we're gonna do some like, you know, air surfing or fucking whatever. Just, and I'm like, it's a shitload fine. of lubricant. Yeah, uh, and then, <laughs> and then you cut you go to the bush of bees, which is steel oh, with like man. an entire beehive of bees hanging off his dick and balls, <laughs> which no thank you. <laughs> seems horrific as somebody that maybe is possibly still allergic to bee stings no thanks <laughs> i've never been stung by a bee I, so I, I would hate to have a thousand of them on my penis i was allergic to them as a kid but i haven't been stung by a bee since i was like nine so i don't right. know <laughs> uh 
but <laughs> him just screaming the entire time after they yeah. all get on there is pretty funny. It's like fucking wailing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then you go to Furniture Shopping, which is the only Irvin Zisman. I think the only one in this. Because I feel yeah. like everything else got cut and went to, like, is it 4.5? But this is just one where he goes in and, like, he's furniture shopping and just, I don't know. For some reason, no one has any concern about the biggest airbag you've ever seen being in the store in the middle of the store <laughs> like these these are the ones where like the public is involved and i'm like okay i i these are cool like it's the ones when it's like i don't know there's just like some random person on the street that they're fucking with that i'm like less interested in yeah um but yeah uh he he's like oh this looks comfortable and like sits on this thing that like i guess is supposed to look like a giant bean bag while zach is pretending to be some sort of like construction dude working yeah, on something and it falls man. into it and it was like launches knoxville into the fucking it's this huge like what well, seems like a pretty high ceiling in this store yeah, like <laughs> 25 feet in the air yeah like, he goes damn. fly it up there <laughs> and this one's like whatever but like mostly just works for the one dude who works there's a reaction it's just like, ah, I don't know, he was just sitting there, and then all of a sudden he was, like, way airborne. <laughs> um, and then we go to <laughs> musical chair bags. So <laughs> good. <laughs> A perfect fucking Wee Man segment. Absolutely nerve-wracking. <clears throat> Where there's four, like, lazy boy chairs, like, in a circle, and they're doing... <laughs> there's only four contestants so no matter what they're all gonna sit down and they're told one of them is gonna launch them when the, when they sit down and they do it like three or four times they're like ah let's keep going and you see like their enthusiasm slowly dwindle yeah. as they go through <laughs> to the point what where I... like at one point we man's like come on just do it already <laughs> so i think nox was like one more yeah. time and you could just see everyone's <laughs> so deflated like fuck me all right and then it like the the twist is all four of them get launched but Wee Man's flips him backwards and he lands in between all four chairs and like all of the safety gear and the hydraulics and shit and he like he goes up there <laughs> <laughs> um and then another this is another one the flight of Icarus which is sort of feels very reminiscent of like a callback to like one and two yeah because the, like the the red rocket if the rocket hadn't almost killed <laughs> Knoxville. Oh my god. I just think I think of the big skateboard loop one that just launches them into like the the river that like takes forever for anyone to actually get through that just seems very painful anytime anyone lands on it. Yeah. Uh and this is just one where they just like launch a dude into the air and then they're like shooting him with paintballs or whatever. Uh which also seems bad as somebody's never been hit by a paintball. Seems like they hurt. Yeah. Uh, and then the backdrop, I think, is just a quick one of... Is this just the dude just fucking riding his bike into the the backdrop that looks like a... a oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, the the other real highlight of Forever, the quiet game. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I think about the skateboard guillotine daily since I've watched it. And, like... Out of almost everything in this movie, outside of maybe the cup test, this, like, that skateboard guillotine seems so shitty. It's one of those ones where it's like, you know the pain would be gone probably a lot quicker than most of the other shit, but seems so painful on, like, first glance. Yeah. Like, I feel like I would almost rather take, like, a taser to the tongue than do this uh, fucking skateboard I'm... guillotine eternally impressed that Rachel is able to like lick the fucking oh taser God. gun and just like not make a peep that seems fucking awful yeah someone has been tased no thank you <laughs> cause of course one of my friends in high school got a taser we all had to try it <laughs> it makes sense yeah not not a fun experience <laughs> but uh so yeah like right like they're all dressed like mimes and they have like that's 
Rachel Poopies and Steve-O. And they have to do these stunts without, like, making a sound. And so Rachel has to lick, like, a, a taser. And she does it a couple times. Uh, and then <laughs> Poopies has to get a kiss from a steak. Which is just getting bit in the face. Which, also, no thank you. <laughs> Uh, seems awful. But then you get to Stevo, and they have a guillotine set up that just has a fucking skateboard deck sideways that's going to hit you in the shins. Fuck. And they do it from like a little, like a middle. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, they they have it. I think the full thing's like ten feet up, God. and they have it at like five at first. And he's like, "Nope, keep going." <laughs> Oh, and it just like the sound it makes when they do it without his legs there. I was like, God, no. This... Um. <laughs> and then like, I think the hardest I laughed the first time I watched it is his like blurred out when he gets hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like immediately goes back like that didn't happen. Like he's supposed to be a mime. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Some of his reactions to his stunts in this this one are pretty great <laughs> but yeah i forgot i was supposed to be quiet uh and then you got to a zach asked kite flight which i think i read that he got like he got some sort of like infection from doing this <laughs> god damn a zach, uh, i mean like zach with a kite attached to him goes running off like the smallest ramp i've ever seen into just a huge thing of cactuses <laughs> Well, and then just gets real fucked up with cactus spikes. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Pass. And then, yeah, like, maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> I feel like my top three of this movie are um, the, the mime one, then definitely this one, the cup test, which I'm trying to, like, yeah, Cup test is definitely like, this. This cup test is like maybe one of the funniest segments in the entire franchise. So good. Everyone, <clears throat> everyone who tries to hurt him <laughs> is so funny. So, oh yeah, the fucking Francis and Ganu. He... <laughs> uh, I forget the softball player's <laughs> name. PK Subban. Yeah, the 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 softball player just is so stoked to be doing this. She's yes. just like, I can't fucking wait. And then when she finally hits him, she's like, Fuck yeah. Yes. But like the the <laughs> they're like, yeah, we told him it was a lightweight boxer, and then this dude comes just fucking walking in. He's like, What? That's not a lightweight. Yeah. And then <laughs> Francis and Gondor's like the largest man in the world. Well, and Jesus then Christ. Steve was like, I'm going to Google the like the the hardest, hardest punch, punch ever thrown, and it's this boxer. <laughs> and he's just like starts reading it and he's just like, Yeah, you could stop. He doesn't need to hear that. Yeah. Uh and it all seems bad, and it gets increasingly bad until you get to a pogo stick, which I was like, I can't believe anyone agreed to this. Yeah, th what a horrible idea. He, had it. Like... he got a ruptured testicle from that scene. <laughs> Ugh. Just fucking no thank you. Like, Yeah, the <clears throat> cup wasn't going to help there. No. I don't know why any, like, anyone, like, he agreed to this, because I was like, this, <laughs> the minute I saw it, I was like, there's no way this goes well. <laughs> right? Oh, God. Uh, Foolish. Then we cut to Porto Explosion, which is just another one of someone in a porta potty that explodes. <laughs> Steve-O again. Yeah. Steve-O can't catch a break in the, in the porta potties. Uh, and then we go to underwater fire farts. <laughs> <laughs> the, we get the dude from Mythbusters where they're trying to light a fart under underwater, which they'd apparently been trying to do since the second movie. <laughs> Another another uh, highlight, Steve was saying, that really rocked my balls. <laughs> like, this is like, I, I really feel like they, they're they onto something with a new cast, and then just the old cast doing, like, this kind of dumb shit. Yeah, just, like, hurting their balls. Yeah, that's like, well, like, something is not, like, inherently, like, really dangerous. Yeah. <clears throat> uh... And you get a quick one of, like, hammock throw, which is just <laughs> them rocking somebody out of a fucking hammock. Seems really <laughs> fun until you see him hit the ground. Oh, man. And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, never mind, that would hurt. And then we get introduced to a real MVP, Dark Shark, with the spider helmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just I don't blame him. I'd be fucking horrified. I that, absolutely not. Like I don't want to do this one, but like spiders don't really bother me. Although I, I mean, I don't want it crawling around my head, which is a real bummer. But like, <clears throat> out of most of the things in this movie, I could probably get through this one relatively easily. I, I think I'd rather <laughs> take the like physical harm. To be honest, <laughs> do not like spiders. I mean, like, I I definitely don't want where Aaron loses and has to be bit, or Aaron, Aaron wins and they just announce he's the loser <laughs> <laughs> and has to like take a bite from this fucking tarantula or whatever. But yeah, no, thank you. Man, those things are just like <clears throat> they're running around freely here in Texas. Uh, like, I was I was on a job site like installing stuff outside, and it was before Halloween. And my van partner was, like, sitting on a bench and, like, four feet away from his head. I had to do a double take because I thought it was a, like, Halloween decoration. <laughs> no, it was just a fucking tarantula on this dude's house. I was like, what the fuck? I feel like I remember seeing him in California. And I know we had, like, a black widow that lived in, like, our... We had one of those, like, pump well things in the backyard that <clears throat> worked, but, like, we never used. Yeah. And I remember, like, there was, like, a black widow that lived in it that I would fuck with all the time when I was, like, eight. Because I was <laughs> real stupid, I guess. <laughs> but, I like, we had, like, a sweet, like, a, like, swing set sort of, like, jungle gym thing my dad had built that I remember getting taken over by. All I could really remember, they were, like, really big spiders that, in my mind, were tarantulas. So, like, maybe they weren't, but, like, I feel, like, in my memory, they were. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Aaron has to take a, a bite from this fucking tarantula. That's the biggest fangs I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> like, awful. But, but Dark Shark is just fucking ripping through that duct tape like it's nothing and just standing up and he's got like, just, <laughs> just like a death grip on the fucking trainer. <laughs> um, and we get Telephone Pole, which is like, probably my least favorite thing in this movie. Or it's just like Knoxville up on the telephone pole and he's trying to get the lady to like help him down and yeah. hang it upside down and like I don't know. I feel the like, least necessary thing in the yeah, movie. I, I feel think. like there was some stuff in four point five that I was like, I would have probably just put this in instead, but uh then we have Dirty Dancing, which I'm not remembering. Because I keep wanting to think it's electric <laughs> tap dance, but I can't remember what Dirty Dancing is. It's, oh, that's Wee Man. When, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wee Man. Preston shits his pants. <laughs> that's, I was like, I don't remember any other dancing, and there's a reason why. It's because Preston shits himself. And they don't yeah, do they it. They can't do it. <laughs> I shouldn't have had Indian and Cuban in the same day. Yeah. <laughs> it's standing there with just this jumpsuit down at his ankles and be like, I'm a 51 year old man. Yeah. <laughs> I think I shit my pants. It's just, you get classic Lance Bangs fucking... Throwing just, up just, immediately. Just fucking... Just absolute king of, like, reactions in these movies. <laughs> it's so funny, because I've listened to, like, a handful of podcasts of, like, Lance Bangs talking to, like, somebody about, like, music. And it's just so interesting, like, listening to him just be this, like really like smart articulate dude about like music and then just cutting to like this where he's just like his entire role is passing out and throwing up yeah. for cameraman <laughs> who throws up all the time um and we get the marching band which <laughs> another one that just seems so painful which is uh, but kind of fun yeah a couple of them marching in a marching band and they have to step on a treadmill sideways <laughs> fuck and, they all get so <clears throat> fucked up oh yeah knoxville's like bleeding from his head steve-o like blacks out from it yeah he gets like a concussion <laughs> it yeah <laughs> seems bad and like yeah, just the way they land seems so terrible uh and then you get coffee truck which i think is eric andre getting blasted in the face by an airbag at the coffee truck <laughs> <laughs> Eric Andre in this is pretty funny. It's just like this, just 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 there hanging out on set, except for like the the scorpion Botox one. He's just like around, and then all of a sudden gets <laughs> this. 
his reaction afterwards is like, oh man, he's like, you know, I'm just stoked. I'm on set. Oh, you still like watch the TV show, blah, blah, blah. And then he's just like, I should have known something was up <laughs> when it was just like, oh, free cold brew. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then another Preston banger, the speed ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. No, thank you. Uh, it's like, uh, you, you're watching the scene of what, like, at first you're very obvious. You're like, well, this is like some sort of like toy set. And then it goes to like a boxing glove, like two boxing gloves and like a ball bag. That's blatantly someone's testicles. And then it just starts going so fast. The boxing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they're just like attached, attached to like whatever motorized thing. <laughs> and they then, still look so fast in slow motion. <clears throat> oh, I know. It's, oh. And then you just hear someone scream and you cut out and you realize Preston is sitting over this thing with his balls through a hole. <laughs> <laughs> and then I forget who it is that has to like pull them back through. Maybe yeah, Wee Man. I think I think it is... Maybe Aaron? Is it Wee Man or is it Dave? Yeah, and it's, it's, this whole segment just seems terrible. <laughs> uh, and then like <laughs> Preston's like delivery when he's like, Alright everybody shut up, let's do this. And they just start smiling. Like he's on, like like he's got to be on camera for the second go. Oh, very funny. Preston killed it. Um, oh, <laughs> and then we cut to bicycle backhand, where one of the best parts of this movie is watching Machine Gun Kelly get just fucking blasted into the pool. Yes, <laughs> he seems like the worst. He seems so stupid. Like I don't know <laughs> how much of it is maybe like because I don't really know anything about him. I knew he was, like, a rapper that turned into, like, a weird, apparently trying-to-be-punk musician. And I know he was dating Megan He's... Kelly, and that's the extent of my knowledge. So I don't know if, like, he he generally comes off as dumb as he's portrayed in this movie or not. Like, uh, but he's he's He was a guest host on Catfish for several episodes, and he was exactly like this on Catfish. Great. <laughs> but him just, but it's him and Steve-O each on exercise bikes and there's like a big giant hand like in the giant antiquing why why did he fall for the, the soup sketch in three <laughs> <laughs> um, and like they're you know the hands are attached to the other's bike and it's so like whoever is going the fastest and like wheels back and then slaps them into the pool. And they do it on accident to Steve O, like while they're like explaining it. And then when they actually go, Steve O just like just goes so fast compared to Machine Gun Kelly somehow, who's like 20 years younger than him. And it blasts Machine Gun Kelly into the pool in his giant fucking lifted up shoes. That's like the one thing I only thing I noticed when he started going is he's still got he's like he's dressed in like like professional bike gear, but then just has these like weird platform like weird platform shoes. shoes on. Uh, but like he gets out and he's like, "Oh, I was watching the other hand. I thought you I was doing the other hand or like yeah. whatever, some fucking real stupid." Um, and we get the triple wedgie, which. <laughs> Which is essentially a sequel to the one where the bungee wedgie, yeah, Rob. <laughs> Which I think I think they've done a couple times to different extents. Where they but they did one where I think it was like the same thing, but it was just Preston jumping with Wee Man attached. This time it's Preston and Zach, uh, and they <laughs> they both drop so fast. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> And then this is another one that's like maybe one of my lesser favorite ones is Scorpion Botox. Yeah. Where I'm like, yeah, I get it, but also I could like there's I feel like there was other shit I would have rather seen instead. Um this is just I don't know, they got a scorpion on Rachel's face, hitting her in the face. <laughs> uh Which seems awful. <clears throat> yeah, no thank you. Seems like a bad time. Uh and then we get toilet geyser. <laughs> Is another essentially kind of a callback one where Dave England is going to where there's a toilet somewhere in public. It's like a yard sale. <laughs> to like take a shit in it. And, but this time the toilet just explodes. 
It's amazing. And like he lands and everyone's just like, he's just like, what, what happened? And everyone's like, what were you doing? For, forget that it exploded. Why were you taking a shit there? It's like, why? <clears throat> and <laughs> that's one where like, I can't tell specifically if he knew it was going to blow up or not. Or if like that was like part of the, like the yeah. twist on him. Which I, but I don't know. I feel like kind of like his reaction. He knew it was going to, but, um, and then the next one's Hurricane Slide. What's this? That's the uh, they have the like parachutes. Oh they yeah, yeah, yeah. With the... Slide off the ramp. We got every poopies. Looks like he fucking knocked himself out. Like we got every fan in Los Angeles here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just like a, yeah, another one where they just have like essentially a giant fucking slide like a uh, bunch of like tarps full of lube and then or no do they have that in this or this is just straight up uh just the parachutes i think this is just parachutes yeah they might have like water on the slide yeah, I, can't remember. I don't know if it's lube um and we get fist skateboard which is pretty funny yeah. <laughs> um and then we get the vulture which is okay, but I feel it goes on a little too long. Yeah. Uh, but you get another perfect dark shark moment. <laughs> this fucking vulture <laughs> on his arm. It's, it's biting my arm. It's like, no, it's not. It's just it's sitting there. His stance Calm down, dark shark. with this thing on his arm is so absurd. <laughs> and then, like, his son's reaction, he's like, man, this is embarrassing. I came out of that dude's penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... And this one's essentially, they just have, like, a vulture that's just, like, I don't know, eating a bunch of, like, fish or whatever fucking, off fucking yeah, Wee Man's like, crotch. meat off a of Wee Man. <laughs> uh, and then another absolute banger, back-to-back, that is, uh, or actually, I guess three back-to-back as part of what feels like, as, as basically one big segment, but kind of is listed as three. You got Pontius Drinks Pig Cum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is so funny and so casual and it's just like, yes. <laughs> like they're, uh, they're explaining that they were trying like they're gonna do this like thing with all this cum and then they realize that pigs apparently create the most of it and <laughs> Knoxville's explaining it Pontius just like picks up the glass and drinks it like out of nowhere and everyone's just like, like so oh, much man. of it and he's just like yep that's definitely pig <laughs> And then you cut to Electric Tap Dance, which has uh, one of my favorite lines in this fucking thing when he's just, <laughs> Tyler, the creator's like, I think Jeff needs to sit on this. I fucking hate Jeff. <laughs> uh, or the, everyone's tap dancing on an electric floor with no shoes on. And then you realize Tyler, the creator's <laughs> stool is also electrified. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not fucking <clears throat> stupid yeah. he's like what's this thing on this chair <laughs> they're trying to tell him it's like a wireless transmitter right. for the piano and he's like it's a fucking piano i know how pianos work <laughs> his reactions are so funny <laughs> and so everyone gets shocked and then it cuts to dave england going out to give like do like a post thing testimonial which is interesting because I guess they're like, I guess they film those for like the documentary, like the point fives, but like it's never in the actual movies. So like the first time, I guess, because I don't think I'd watch any of the point fives until after I watched this one. And like I was watching it and I was like, how did he fall for this? There's never like them giving like talking heads in these movies. And then I realized it was like they do them for the point fives, but he's giving a talking head and they're just like, Oh, what's like your favorite stunts throughout the years? And he's like talking about like the, like this fire hose stunt. The, yeah. Fire hose rodeo. <laughs> and then all of a sudden just like gallons of pig cum fall on him. <laughs> <laughs> of his reaction afterwards was like, I asked why I couldn't wear my cool hat. And I guess that's why. <laughs> and they show like a slow motion one of some of it getting in his mouth. And then like, <laughs> just, Oh, so much cum. Uh, real bummer. I <laughs> I think it was in an episode like Katie and I did. I was talking about, there's this the QAnon Anonymous podcast did like a Patreon episode about the rise of like 
cryptid erotica over the last couple <laughs> years. And so, like, they're talking about it, and, like, they read some of it, and there's this Bigfoot one. And I'm haunted by the line in one of these books of, you make too much cum. <laughs> Which, thinking about in terms of Bigfoot is just upsetting to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> now that and this are just, like, linked in my head. <laughs> um, and then you get to the lie detector, which seems real bad. Uh, the, this is anytime you got to be strapped in with leather straps well this is one of those ones that i've like every time i watch it i'm like this seems like th this was like 20 seconds away from being a real disaster <laughs> uh aaron is strapped down to a lie detector and like strapped into a chair and <laughs> another incredible line delivery when he's just like are you allergic to bees and he's like yes and he like shocks him or whatever or is it i forget whatever he asked him he's allergic to yeah it was, uh, it was bees and, and he's like i think you're telling a fib and he's like hold on, hold on let me let me just think yeah, some things let me through figure some, let me <laughs> figure some things out, out. like what <laughs> And then he's like, all right, well, this will calm you down a little bit. Pours honey on him. And then he starts putting salmon on him. And then he just leaves the room and a bear comes in. <laughs> and just Aaron's face this entire segment. Just, just what a king. He's just, again, the MVP of this entire franchise. Uh, and so this bear is just eating, <laughs> eating salmon off him. <laughs> he's the Everyone... Thing. Everyone's having the best time of their lives, and Aaron's sitting there like, <laughs> like a fucking stone because he's so fucking scared. And just like casually, like he's like he's in there like just frozen and just like, what the fuck? There's a bear in here. <laughs> like, and then you just hear like over the intercom, Knoxville being like, "Bear, eat that dick." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, it's just, and the bear, like, it is, it's again, it's another one where I'm just like, this bear's gonna, like, eat his hand. Like, this is going on too long. They're letting this go on too long. <laughs> um, and we cut to Plexi Paddle Penis, which was a real revelation for me, because I don't know if you've ever seen the picture that Megan from Couch Slut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that I was just like, oh, I shit. I was like, oh, hey, what? it's those things. I was like, I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, I know this. I know this game. Uh, I was like, I've seen this picture a lot <laughs> from being friends with Megan. So I know where this is going. Uh, And apparently does not hurt, according to Pontius, which I... I Pretty wild. But also... Pontius him saying that it's like been like a bit should i try it out yeah <laughs> is he telling the truth like i've seen pontius have a woodpecker hit like peck at his dick and you know scorpions it snakes and bite like yeah <laughs> so I'm like, tip of his penis i feel like maybe like, you just don't have feeling there anymore <laughs> yeah he might not be the best person to uh, <laughs> trust on that uh and this is just like they have these essentially if you haven't seen it these plexiglass slabs that they screw down to like credit card size on their dicks, and then he's just like playing paddleboard with it. Uh, <laughs> Rachel's Rachel's delivery of like you're definitely never gonna be president. <laughs> uh, and we cut to the magic trick, which is where Knoxville gets thoroughly fucked up by a bull, yeah, just annihilated. Um, he's. <laughs> He's doing the magic trick where he pours milk into a hat and then it's supposed to make it disappear and then just gets absolutely wrecked by a bull where he like, he broke I think his wrist, a bunch of ribs, had like a major concussion. Like he got like real fucked up and I think it was like early on in filming too. And like you can actually, you see like, because they've done like this bull stunt a couple times before. But you see everyone's face after he like does this flip. They cut to everybody. They're like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, they're like, "Oh, I think we're, he I think we're fucking hits his head so hard." <laughs> like, I think we're, oh my god, this movie's done. <laughs> and it's one of those ones where, like, I think at the beginning of it, Steve was like, even at like my lowest points, when I like really just wanted to die, I would not do this. <laughs> Get in the fucking thing with the bull. And but it does. It cuts to after he gets absolutely wrecked. It cuts to him like leaving the hospital <laughs> that's when you get like just again another perfect lie delivery of like 
Like, <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> And they're just like, uh, did you see like the, you know, the trick was supposed to be that like, you would not see the milk. And they're like, yeah, you see the milk. And he's like, ah, shit. Shit. <laughs> that and that bull really hates magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last segment is Vomitron, which <laughs> starts out gross and then just turns into what I feel like you should have, should have expected something to happen if you're filming this segment. <laughs> uh, you got five of the dudes are all supposed to drink a gallon of milk and then get on this, like, uh, carousel thing that's spinning them super fast. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're just surrounded by everybody getting shot by paintballs. And then just, like, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> uh, drinking all that colored milk seems gross. Awful. Like, I don't know if the fact that it's, like, colored purple and shit is making it worse for me but no thanks <laughs> uh <laughs> there's one of them i think i think i uh <laughs> like steve-o being like if it's who's can throw up the fastest i think i got a real fucking chance at this one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but yeah it's just like a them just like all this like turns into like a huge paintball thing where it's just like the aftermath of I think Dave England how many times he got hit and I think it's oh my uh, God. is it Jasper that gets hit right in the mouth yeah Jasper gets hit in the <laughs> mouth Steve-O gets hit right on the shaft of his dick oh man yeah no thanks uh, <laughs> and that looked brutal just was like, oh my god the absolute perfect way to end this movie and like with England being alright that's it that's a wrap on this we're done <laughs> Uh, and then you get like the credits where you get a bunch of unseen footage and stuff and, uh, another rendition of, uh, fuck, what's that song? The, no, oh, the jackass theme. No, um... uh, well, it's that and it's, um, oh, if, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, I don't know why all of the fucking credits for like, like this and like 3D They're especially. All incredible. I was like. Oh, it's it's equal like heartwarming and just like shit where you're just like that seems painful <laughs> super super fucking funny yeah and i'm just like all oh, of this shit got cut and i'm just like come on <laughs> i want to see all of this but like i think it's like 3d where they do like all like all like everyone including like the cameraman and all that shit like their childhood photos and then you see like some of like the stunts when they first started and like they do a little bit of that in this, where you get, like, some more, like, old Ryan Dunn footage and stuff. And, I don't know. Just another one, like, I just, like, again, may, just, I guess, coming up with these dudes where, like, I was on it pretty early. And, like, like you know, like I said, I saw at least the first two in theaters. I feel like I saw three as well. I think Forever is the only one I didn't see in a theater. Like, I don't know. Like, just heartwarming. And... Delightful. Just, oh, just perfect movie. This I don't know how this did win Best Picture, right? Last year or whatever. Just give it every award. Should have gotten at least best stunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Create best stunts for the Oscars, which I don't know how that hasn't been a thing yet. Like, how do you not have a best stunt award at the Oscars? Come on. Um. Yeah. Just perfect movie, perfect franchise. 10 out of 10 easily uh i think you can watch it free on prime if people haven't seen it and want to watch it but uh i think so honestly i signed up for paramount plus solely for these <laughs> and like the like i feel like i've gotten my money's worth by just like being casually being like everything's bad i should watch jackass right um yeah uh i'm not looking up news so uh what uh yeah, as far as I know, there was no news. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure everything is going pretty good in the world. Yep, <laughs> no issues at all. Um, what'd you watch this week? Let's see. Oh my God, Letterbox, why do you have so many ads? Oh, uh, I, 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 dude, I do like I did like a 
a yearly thing, so I always forget that there's even fucking ads on it. <laughs> oh, I forgot they they have a Black Friday deal, didn't they? I fucking missed it. Fuck. Yeah, I forget what it was. I keep meaning it was to something do it. like, I don't know, fifty dollars for a year and you get like a bunch of extra stats and shit. So I was like, yeah. fuck it, I'll see what this is about and I just have that now. Uh the only thing that I watched was Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, <laughs> which is dog shit. Worse or the same than the uh, red, like the regular remake. Uh, I'm gonna say probably slightly better than the regular remake. Oh, but like, yeah, still not worth watching at all. The whole thing is just like, why are we doing this? I don't need to know any of this. Like, <laughs> I it's I, I I kind of hate because like I like it chapter one a lot and like I like to. To, like, a, a decent extent. I don't find it as unwatchable as everyone else seemed to. Yeah. Um, but I kind of hate how much it just made everyone think we need endless Stephen King things. Yeah. Or, like, even just shit where it's just, like, now it's just stuff based on Stephen King works, but, like, original stories that aren't actually Stephen King's are just like, what are we doing? I don't need a fucking Pennywise prequel series. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't need to know the backstory on any of this shit. Right. Like, uh, oh yeah. The only news this week: Scream Seven seems like it's going pretty well. God, <laughs> fuck that franchise. I, I don't like those movies to begin with, but like, at this point, I'm just like, what are you doing? Just, just you don't have your two lead actors now. Just, just call it a day. We don't need to keep going. Um, cowards. Yeah, the only thing I watched this week is. Uh, at least movie wise was Caitlin and I did an episode on Della Morte Della More aka Cemetery yeah. Man I can't fucking wait for them severing uh, 4k uh, what a banger of a film <clears throat> it's so good like I the I listened to the Sever podcast where they talked about like all the Black Friday shit last night and i uh, like I'm very stoked to see some of the bonus stuff on it. Because, like, I was going to get The Church and The Sect as well. Yeah. But I already own all three of these on a Blu-ray. But they're all, like, pretty bare bones. And I was like, well, like, I don't know how much I necessarily care about any of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff of The Church and The Sect. So, like, if I don't get those, it's whatever. But I was like, I have to have Cemetery Man because it's, like, one of my favorites. and It's been so hard to get, like... And I, the, I have, like, like a, just, like, a, you know, UK Blu-ray of it, but there's, like, you know, maybe a 10-minute interview with Michaeli Suave, and that's it on it. So I'm stoked to see any of the bonus stuff on it. And I figure, like, whatever, assuming they don't sell out, I'll probably get around to the church and the sect sometime this month, just order those. Because I yeah. really like both those movies, too, but... Uh, did you did you grab anything from either Severin or Vinegar Syndrome? Uh, so I picked up Cemetery <clears throat> Man from Severin, and at that point I had already bought Existence, Redneck Zombies, and the Outwaters from Vinegar Syndrome. So I was like, well, I can only get one more thing, especially <laughs> at, you know, 50 bucks a pop. Yeah, Severin's <laughs> shit was very expensive Se- this year. It's wild not like i was like oh these are 45 bucks i mean like, i get it like i get it they're i think but, all three of those the set uh the the seven they're all like three discs yeah, three and or like four discs, a ton so. of special features yeah. so like i don't mind i just <clears throat> didn't have the money yeah. for anything else i uh i took full advantage of the paypal uh for payments thing <laughs> yeah because i i think the only thing from seven i got was cemetery man but i'll like i said like i honestly i might look when i get my thanksgiving week like holiday paycheck yeah and just next next paycheck i'm gonna double back yeah because i really want like <clears throat> i want that the church shirt so no oh, yeah but all three of the shirts that they did yeah for the suave movies are sick but <clears throat> i already had let's see i daryl lost picture show the prophecy existence and i think the black room maybe fatal games were all part of my subscription yeah so then I ended up grabbing the Untold Story, A Gun for Jennifer, and Redneck Zombies. 
Uh, God, I, redneck zombies. It's so good. Rules. I can't wait to see what it looks like. <laughs> Fancy fucking yeah. Blu-ray transfer for it. <laughs> One of the first VHS movies. <laughs> uh, I ended up grabbing that like the that Angel trilogy that they did the new slip covers for. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I. Th- I think a hitcher in the dark is the only other thing I grabbed, which was like a an older one I didn't have. Uh, I wish oh, I, I wish all the non movie <clears throat> stuff that they made wasn't so fucking cool, so it would stay in stock a little longer. Yeah, because I, I want the LED sign same. and I want the now playing stand. <laughs> I want the I should have got a yo yo just to have. <laughs> right. Um. That, yeah, that LED light I don't think I saw until after it sold out. Because I probably would have bought it. Because I said, told Caitlin it's I wanted so it. so fucking cool. And they were just like, where are you going to put it? I was like, above my bed. What do you think? Yeah. Like, right next what to where I mean? sleep. <laughs> uh, and I grabbed, like, I think the or the the Maniac comic collection. Because the I grabbed the zombie one when they first released it. And it's fucking super good. So, I'm interested to see what the Maniac one's like. Um. Oh, yeah. I think I grabbed... I did. I think that's it. There's some something else. I pre. Oh no, I pre-ordered the Wood Chipper Massacre from Terror Vision. I think that's it. Um. All right. Shout outs. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Let's fuck. See. <clears throat> Let's see what I've been listening to. Does anything good? Nope. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All reliable. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna say vinegar, cinder, and severin. I've like solid. I like. I love that Severin does their podcast because, like, I don't know. I really like hearing sort of the how some of these things get like restored and kind of just like the whole process of how they came about all this stuff. Because like, and there's this Black Friday one, like the guy that like created Severin or whatever talks about like going and interviewing Michaeli Suave for some yeah. of this. And like, apparently he lives in like, I, I think they said maybe his old like grandparents house in Italy that literally has a gated off door in their kitchen that goes down to like fucking catacombs. No oh, fuck. And I was like, yeah, that checks out. <laughs> and it makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I, I really like listening to sort of like the behind the scenes stuff of how like these boutique labels kind of work and like kind of spent like Severin especially like I know Terror Vision does one now but I haven't I haven't listened to it yet but like they <laughs> one of the dudes was like I had to literally like download an extension for Chrome that blocked Blu-ray forums from me <laughs> being able to look at because he's like I'm just tired of listening to people bitch about like yeah oh it's taking too long Where's my, why didn't this ship the minute I bought it? How come like right. this, this is just like, do you understand how much fucking work getting like a box set made is? <laughs> or like even just the, especially the way it's like with how much like bundles and like merch and shit Severin does. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> and I'm sure it's like a very small operation. Yeah. Like if they're not like running like an Amazon operation. I bet their warehouse is like maybe eight 20 people, people <laughs> like, maybe um but i don't know i like i really like like uh appreciate sort of someone going into like a lot of the behind the scenes things of like how and even just like just the aspect of like restoring some of these films is really interesting to hear and they're they're killing it all these boutique movie labels just doing the lord's work yeah uh yeah what did uh did you have anything you wanted to shout out oh yeah hi i know what my shout out's gonna be now uh it's gonna be the NECA robocop action figure of murphy getting shot to death <laughs> holy shit i the, don't think i saw that <laughs> coolest fucking shit i've ever seen in my life so he like he has, like, interchangeable hands, you know, so you can swap out his right hand for just, like, a big spool of blood, like, <laughs> pouring out of it. Uh, I guess one of his arms detaches, and then you can swap out his vest for one that has, like, bullet holes in it and shit. Oh my god, this is incredible. <laughs> I'm it's looking at it now. <laughs> the, 
the fucking sickest thing I've ever seen. God, that scene's so fucked up. <laughs> right? I like I th- very funny thing to make a <laughs> fucking action figure of. <laughs> I think I for like a while I had only ever seen RoboCop like on like TV. And so I remember when I first got like a DVD of it when like it f- like first kind of got released on uh, like a DVD format. And seeing, like, the uncut version of it being like, God damn, <laughs> this goes yeah, hard. Like, holy shit. Um, Alright, I think next week, I think Katie and I are going to do Good Burger 2 this Hell week. Hell yeah. So that way we'll have an episode, because I'm going to drop this tonight. And then, yeah. that way that I'll have us back on track, where we'll be, like, the week ahead or whatever. And then we're going to do whatever dumbass Christmas movies we decided to do. I know we're doing Ernest Saves Christmas and Jingle all the way, but I think we'll have one more. I'm pushing for Santa with muscles with super cool dude Hulk Hogan. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Totally unproblematic yeah, man. Hulk totally Hogan. not all ever lying. Like <laughs> Or racist. Uh, the fucking quote about him wrestling more days than there are in a year in one year because he's flying <laughs> back and forth to Japan is so funny. God damn it. Uh, how you, what a guy. How, how you feeling about CM Punk? <laughs> That's just fucking <laughs> weird. I'm going to watch tonight. I mean, he, he fucking got me. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what he's going to say, I'm but definitely, I'm giving him like 10 months. No. Well, he tops. has to stay at least six months because now Ryback has said if he stays in WWE for six months, he'll retire. So, yeah, CM Punk, be good for at he's, least six months. He's going to be good at least through WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Because that's all he wants is to fucking headline WrestleMania. I mean, like, I'm on board. I don't know the backstage stuff, but I always liked him as a wrestler. So, yeah, like, I love CM Punk. And... It's, just, it's, the, it's so much silly drama. Yeah. It's like... Come on, man. But there's definitely some people I feel like in current WWE that I feel like he could have some pretty sick matches with. So, like some of the yeah. younger dudes that I'm like, I'm interested. We'll see. I just, the way he returned was so baffling. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, what the fuck is like, this? I think it would have been way better if they had, like, not, like, they literally, what should have happened is he should not have, like, been there. Because literally every fucking thing was like, he's he. I think he's returning at Survivor Series. Like, he should have just literally Raw should have opened and he should have came out. Yeah, and I, been there for that. People would have like, lost the fuck? their fucking minds instead of just having him walk out and like, I don't know, pose like Nobody Randy, acknowledges it. <laughs> pose like Randy like, Orton what? and then wave and then just like go back, I guess. <laughs> and watch Seth, Seth Rollins get maybe fake mad possibly real question mark <laughs> um that's i think that's the thing i'm most interested in at this point is like i can't tell i, I want to know who's really mad yeah because there's all of that footage of like drew mcintyre apparently like storming out of the arena before he came out and then yeah. like i don't know there's been so much shit over the years of like seth rollins like talking shit about him about yeah. how he's just, like, a bad dude to be around in general. So, like, now at this point, I can't tell if any of it's, like, what part of it is real or fake. And I guess even to the extent that there was, like, a house show, like, last night that he just, like, came out and people were, like, chanting CM Punk. And he's like, I don't want to talk about a dude who hasn't been here for a decade and has done nothing but try to, like, tear down this company. I want to talk about the people that have been here <laughs> this entire time, blah, 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 or, like, whatever. And I'm like... I can't tell if you're like really fucking mad or like (laughs) if this is all part of how much of this is a word. Yeah. So I guess we'll see. Randy Orton looked fucking jacked though from some of the things I saw. And that RKO from the, the fucking, that they threw the dude off the cage was very impressive. Ridiculous. (laughs) Um, wrestling. Very good. Best sport. Everybody just pray Ryback retires. Please. And then get him booted from social media. Because <laughs> he's very stupid. His <laughs> his immediate backtrack of like, I, I meant he was going to return to AEW. I'm not retiring. It was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> a fucking dummy. 
Um, all right. If you would like to support us in our campaign to take down Ryback, join our Patreon at <laughs> patreon.com. And, and why, why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. You know, this is our new mission statement. Katie's on board. We're all on board. No more Ryback. We've, we've made it past a point of needing a Ryback. <laughs> um, yeah. Patreon.com slash I have podcast. Uh, sometime in the near future, We'll have a bonus episode on Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping. Which I don't know if Kid has ever seen, but I can't fucking wait to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. It uh uh I mean like, you know, same same crew that made Hot Rod. Yeah. And it's it's I don't know. I love it. I feel like Katie has talked about that she's seen it and did not enjoy it. But we'll see on a rewatch because I feel like her her taste have changed so but it's uh very good uh you can buy merch at our store frontier shop you can leave us a rating and review on itunes and spotify follow kid at hidden kids three and kidification of blood follow katie at werewolf face join katie's patreon at patreon.com slash werewolf face uh like i said earlier caitlin and i have a new episode of nate k movie club on cemetery man which is mostly us arguing about whether any of it is actually happening to the main character or not, or if it's all in his head. <laughs> <laughs> I have a theory that like all like the zombies are real, but none of the shit that happens after he gets bit is real. And it's all in his head. He definitely tried to have his penis cut off. <laughs> That's real. I Well, like, like I, my theory is that like, uh, I my my theory is that it's all Jacob's ladder scenario, where everything after he gets bit is happening in his mind as he's dying. Because <laughs> like you get to like some of the absurd shit where like he's killing people in the town, but like, yeah. like he shoots people in the hospital and is just like yells at the detective that he's the one that did it, and the detective's like, "Oh, you got your gun on you, good." Some lunatics upstairs shooting a bunch of people or whatever, and I'm just like, "This is all fake." This cop can't be this bad at his job <laughs> i hope <laughs> um yeah so you can listen to that uh and then yeah good burger 2 next week which i've heard is not great so not expecting not expecting a lot but i'm hoping at least kel was very funny in it I didn't realize it was even real until I signed up for Paramount Plus, and I was like, "Oh, uh, what?" I remembered seeing a thing that they were doing it, and then like forgot about it, and then all of a sudden I kept seeing like stuff was like coming the twenty second or whatever, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" But then a lot of the people I follow on Letterbox have just been like, "I don't know, like the nostalgia part of it, it like still works, but kind of like it's a mess." So I'm interested to see. What yeah. It's like. Um, all right. I hope you have Indian and Cuban food in the same day. But why? <laughs> same.